Hello fellow optimistic gardeners. I've got a packed program for you tonight. So as well as trying to dodge the black fly, I'll be showing you different ways to grow potatoes and garlic, even if you've only got a small area to grow them in. I'll be potting up my new box plant and I'll be showing you how I do composting here in the optimistic garden. So if any of those things tickle your gardening palette, join me for this week's gardening diary. So as you can see, I'm in full anti-black fly mode now. Um, unfortunately, this hat, as good looking as it makes me uh, makes me be, is not going to be coming off for the next uh, quite a few weeks, probably a month, because uh, yeah, they're going to be terrible until the weather gets nice and hot. Anyway, moving on. So, you guys that have uh, seen recently seen my planting potatoes video will know that I planted them two ways. I'm trying an experiment. The traditional way where you plant them in earth and earth them up and um, a more traditional coastal sort of uh, way, which is planting them in seaweed and then earthing them up with seaweed all the way through. Well, one of our subscribers, uh, Mr. Dave Chapman, very kindly, he, he gives me lots of uh, comments, which is really, really appreciated. And he came up with a third way. And he says he puts, um, sometimes puts his potatoes in a, in a fibre bag, um, puts six inches of earth underneath them, and then covers them with partially de decomposed leaves, or leaf mould, really. So I thought, hello, why don't I try that? So I haven't got a fibre bag, and I asked him the question, would I reckon it would be okay if I used you know, like a wooden box. And he said, ah, oh, I can't see any, any reason why not. So, what I've got is um, a uh, chipboard box that I usually use to store um, daily tubers in over the winter. Um, and what I've done, as you can see, is um, got some plastic line in it um, just to, you know, partially protect the, the board, even though it doesn't actually cost really hardly anything. Um, six inches of, of um, compost, leaf mould, etc. in the bottom. I've uh, drilled some holes in the bottom of it. Here's some of the um, Yukon Gold potatoes I've got left. So one, one, two, three. Let's put four in there for luck, shall we? Four. They look nice looking ones. So I've got some of my trusty leaf mould here. As you can see, still got some lots in there. So some good um, quality leaf mould there. So I'll give them a good covering. Make sure they're nice and blocked out. That's about sort of the depth that I would normally um, get that rock out, normally put the earth in there. So I'll leave them, leave them on the side here for the minute. So that's obviously the bed where I've got the potatoes. So let the third experiment begin. Jobs are good. So as I very much appreciate um, Dave Chapman's comments all the time, he's always given me um, good bits of. Um, advice here and there and, and telling me the sort of stuff he does. Um, I'm not setting myself up as any sort of expert. Um, I just love gardening and I love talking about it and I love sharing the way I do things and hopefully inspiring people to do their, um, to get themselves out in the garden. So if you've got any comments on anything I do, please don't hesitate to, um, to put them down in the comment section below. I'm really, really, really looking forward to any comments people have on any of my stuff. Even if it's, your videos are rubbish. At least I know that you think that. So this is how bad the black fly are. The other day I, I was doing the potato video and um, the black fly was swarming all around me. And I did the usual black fly hand shuffle and uh, karate chopped the end of my camera, the viewer off my camera off. So at the moment it's a bit of a uh, a bit of a dodge a dodgy repair but at least it's working 
annoying things. But at least we get to look at that beautiful scene. So here I am at my um, rather scruffy, but um, usually rather effective compostarium. My compost area. And I, I try and compost as, as, as much as possible. All the kitchen scraps, you know, everything from around the, um, from around the garden, um, seaweed, actual horse manure, bring in, put that into the composting. That adds a real good mix to your, to your hot composting process. I use a, a three bin um, compost area. So on this side here, I've got where all the new stuff goes. And then when that fills up, I'll put it in the center bin and, and then I'll turn that a couple of times and then I'll put that in the third bin and that should be ready to go after a little bit longer. Over winter, it's very slow. Hardly any composting occurs here because it all freezes up. Um, but this, this bin was full at the start of the season. I've already used all the compost that was in, in that bin, the various bits around the yard. Did I say yard? I meant garden. Yard to you Northern, North Americans. Um, and this, I've just uh, moved all of this compost from this bin into here. So now I'm going to basically turn all this compost that was in this bin, and this, this has been in here quite most of the winter as well, and put it into the centre bin, which has already got some of the, some weeds I put in there um, and, and some other garden and kitchen waste already in there. So um, I'll have a quick show you what I actually um, put in the first bin, the different types of kitchen waste, etc. So I shall put my gloves on for this. being a bit yucky in there. Right, so obviously you can see I've got um, some old brailed brown cardboard etc and before it goes into the into the second bin I would normally as I've just done there chop that up a bit anything basically from the from the kitchen old clementines I think that is old onions that we haven't used well I would have eaten that but the missus has chucked that one out um, I don't really like the plastic, but Mrs. F tends not to listen to me when I tell her not to put that in. Um, tea bags, they go in. Any sorts of cardboard, like I said, as long as it's not processed. Uh, just plain brown cardboard, the stuff you want to bung in. Here's another kitchen, kitchen waste. So toilet rolls, I have been using these in the spring so far. Uh, for, for plants, they make really good ones planting uh, receptacles for things like legumes and, or any sorts of climbing beans because they have long root runs, sweet peas etc. But now that's over, let's get that in the compost bin. Potato peelings obviously, um, banana peel, anything like that, um, that all goes in. Obviously no, you don't want to put any cooked food, any meats or anything like that in there especially as you'll be um, attracting over here, at least, the raccoons. And another thing that I often put in, which is coffee granules. Even, oh, I think the fly's got in through my defences. Even I cut these open usually, the old uh, Keurig things, and put the coffee granules in, because that's good. But I found... Uh, I was looking at the Nova Scotia Gardening Club site the other day and someone mentioned that they put coffee, their coffee granules, around their hostas and their tulips etc and the deer don't tend to, um, to eat them after that so I've been trialling that and so far whether any deer have come here or not I haven't had any hostas or my tulips eaten in the last few weeks so um, maybe it's working. I'm going to continue to use it and even though I'm not putting it in the compost I'm just I'm composting it through putting it into the earth anyway, so um, yeah, coffee is a good one. So that's it. What I'm going to do now is um, start to turn all this lot into the second bin and let the process um, carry on. That's my composting process. 
So I've got this uh, box plant here. I bought it last year in the at the end of the season in the sales. And uh, I thought it was about time I better pot it up and give it a permanent position. So here we are. What size is this pot? 12 and a half inch pot this is. So what I'm going to do is fill it, um, I'll put a crock in there as you can see, cover the hole. So we don't want that to fill up so because if um, that gets blocked up then as soon as you start watering the water is just going to fill up and then drown the roots of the box plant. So we want to put a, um, a broken crock or some stones over that hole. I'm going to use um, a mixture of um, leaf mould, topsoil, got, uh, garden compost um, and some topsoil. You want to give it, um, you don't want to use just your plain potting compost out of, the, out of the bag. It needs to have a bit of depth, something about it so that it can uh, support the, the box plant throughout the season. It doesn't get dry really, really quickly. So let's get a bit of that in here. We like a bit of box. It um, provides a bit of a uh, bit of splendour to your to your uh, bit of formality to the um, to the garden. So I think I'm probably going to have it somewhere on the deck um, to make it look nice out. At least to start with, anyway. So let's have a look. I've given this a water. So I think I've got that right straight up. I've got it a couple of inches below the level of the um, of the actual pot itself. Obviously, we want to want to do that. So when you when you when you water it, you want to give it a, a good drink once a week rather than little and often. You want to give it a real good soaking. So allowing it to have a bit below the uh, level of the pot will will do that. So let's fill it up round it. Drink again. There we go. Let that settle in. Should be able to take some cuttings off this actually. Some softwood cuttings. I'll do a little film on that, and then when the when the um, autumn comes around, I should be able to. Or the, yeah, the autumn comes around, I'll take some hardwood cuttings. Now, if you've ever wondered why box is so expensive, well, here's a cutting I took, not this winter just gone, but the winter before, and it's grown basically that much in the first year. So obviously it's got a bit of growing to do to even get to this point. Um, so now I don't swear so much when I see the, um, the price of box, um, but it's not gonna stop me taking cuttings. I've ta already taken um, about 50 cuttings off the, the box I, I took uh, last autumn off the box and hopefully at least you know, 20 or 30 percent of them will take so I don't mind waiting but there we go one box I think that'll look nice once I once I trim it up I'm gonna let it um, let it settle in before I give it a good trim and uh, yeah that'll look nice jobs are good un. so if you've um, been watching any of my other videos especially the one about uh, this pallet here you'll know that I was I've been running out of I've been running out of space to put me all my vegetables um, so I knocked up this pallet because I've got I had some uh, spring onions or green onions um, to put down and I had some extra broccoli plants etc so I thought I'd um, I'd utilize the pallets that I've got knocking about well I've just realized I haven't planted any garlic either. So I thought I might as well knock up another another pallet. And I filled it with, uh, with earth and um, some topsoil, some compost and some leaf mold. And I thought I might as well plant some of this garlic. I know it's a bit late in the season, but um, I've got it, so I might as well use it. So this is the old shop-bought um, 
garlic, proper planting garlic bulbs. And I'm going to break up the bulb if I can. And then plant each one of these clothes. So I want to plant the clothes so that the, so obviously you've got a an upside. Let me come closer. We've got an upside pointy bit and a downside rooty bit. So we're going to plant it. So we're going to plant it so the the, um, the top end is a couple of inches below the um, the surface of the actual compost. And I'm going to plant it. I'm going to put my finger in actually. Do a few finger holes. About just under a hand's a hand's length apart. Give them a bit of space to develop in. And it's as simple as that. Last year my garlic developed a bit of rust. So they didn't um, develop as much as I wanted them to do to be as fat, etc. You know, once they get rust they'll stop basically um, growing. They were edible, but they just weren't nice, big, juicy, big, fat ones. So we'll see this year how they get on. So I'm just gonna keep planting these, a couple of inches below soil level. So obviously once your, uh, your garlic is ripe, you've got to dry it, etc. And then if you store it right, you can store it for a good few months. So this is basically going to be in here for the whole of the season really, which is why it's good that I've made a, um, another bed and I haven't got to worry about it. Hopefully just plant it. Let it grow away, and then you know towards the end of the season when it starts to try and flower and the um, and the leaves start to die off, you know that the garlic is ready for collection, as they say. Ah, uh, those lovely black flyer flying round me, trying to look for a, a chink in my armour. Right, last bit. A bit low on soil here. I was playing ultimate frisbee last night and down the local school field and literally as soon as you stopped moving you would have 50 of them round you. So obviously it paid to keep moving. There we go, that's them all covered. Just gonna water them in and then uh, leave them for the season really. Won't be harvesting them till late in the season. Um, I don't know, September, October, maybe even November. Um, we'll see how they go. I'm looking forward to a nice bit of tasty garlic at some point.